Greetings, ladies and mantle gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from Outer of space. space. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Story number one. You fight how? Written by Armored Cadian. Humans, when they finally discovered FTL and met the rest of the galaxy, were incredibly confused by how the rest of the galaxy formed. Apparently... Every other race discovered, besides humans, was so adapted to using natural weapons that other forms of combat never occurred to them. Their idea of ship combat was usually some combination of stalking your target, trying to be undetected, and boarding actions for quick strikes to vital regions of the target ship. They understood the concept of explosions from something malfunctioning but due to natural weapons being so much more efficient, had never occurred to them to contain explosions to throw projectiles. Then came the humans. And boy, oh boy, were the first ships to try and prey on human ships ever surprised. Because it turns out that the sensors calibrated to try and detect incoming projectiles are more than capable of making a mockery of the rest of the galaxy's stealth capabilities. As a result, the would-be pirates were spotted almost immediately, and then shot. This unknown phenomenon of being damaged from a distance spooked the pirates badly enough that they fled right away. Eventually, these stories got around after this happened to enough ships. The galactic community asked the humans about the phenomenon. Below is the exact transcript recorded from the Senate. Human Ambassador David Smith addressing Senator Zor Flug. D. Smith. So, uh, what exactly are you asking about our ships? Zor Flug. How do they inflict damage on other vessels without boarding? We just, uh, shoot enemy vessels? Please explain this shoot concept to us. Our translators seem to be having issues with the term. We point a cannon at the target and uh, fire a projectile at it. Uh, I, I don't understand why this is a discussion. Everyone knows what a gun is. What's the big deal? Could you please elaborate on what a cannon or a gun are? Are you fucking with me right now? How could your species possibly make it to space without knowing how to use a standard weapon? No, we are most certainly not trying to mate with you. What do you mean by a weapon? Is this ability to attack at range one of your natural Terran fighting styles? In a manner of speaking, uh, yes. Um, humans have long history of throwing rocks at things that we want dead. You throw rocks to fight? That sounds incredibly inefficient compared to just smashing your opponent with your fists or disemboweling them with your claws. Well, um, just a rock thrown at normal human strength isn't that a factor, but um, that's why we invented technology that lets us throw them with increasing speed, power, and distance. Guns are just using a contained explosion to throw a metal projectile a great distance at a target. No different from how a spaceship moves, really. This technology means that natural strength doesn't matter, but how do you determine the strongest then? Well, uh, there's a saying that God made man, and that Samuel Colt made them equal. Uh, that's a famous gun manufacturer from our history, by the way. I see, um, I think we have discovered quite a lot. I need some time to digest these discoveries. Oh, no kidding. Transcript ends. Shortly after the Senate meeting, the concept of guns eventually spread throughout the galaxy, but humans remained the undisputed master in their use. No races dared to pick a fight with humans after that. End of story. Story number two. All the Humans, written by Teller of Tall Tales. I sat and glided the human's living room as he prepared some kind of food in the kitchen, he hummed a soft tune as the clink and clack of utensils and pots filled the room. I shifted my weight on the couch, a device for resting not meant for my physiology. According to Clyde, I wasn't dissimilar in appearance to the human world's albatross, if it had weird scraggly arms instead of wings. 
Clyde shuffled from the kitchen in his bathrobe, graying hair cut neatly near the top of his head. The skin around his face wrinkled from many of what he called a good laugh or cry, though I had no idea the meaning of those words. Clyde set a plate of thinly sliced fish on some sort of grain in front of me before sitting down with a plate of brown, red and yellow in blobs and odd shapes. Before I ate the uh, sashimi Clyde had prepared, I curiously asked, Human Clyde, uh, what is on your plate? He paused with a cube of red halfway to his open mouth, quickly closing it as though not to show his teeth too long. Gesturing with a multi-pronged utensil to each item, he stated, Eggs, potatoes, toast, and steak. He picked up the red cube of uh, steak and stuck it in his mouth, chewing slowly and thoughtfully with his eyes closed. I paid him no more attention as I picked up the piece of sashimi and set it on my beak, closing it and mimicking Clyde's actions as opposed to my usual glut. My eye membranes flicked back the moment I closed them as flavors I'd never encountered danced across my tongue. I couldn't stop myself as I masticated the sashimi and grabbed another piece, repeating the process until my plate was empty. I felt satisfied. Even after such a small meal, I felt that I could eat no more. Clyde mopped up his plate with a piece of toast before stuffing it in his mouth and setting his plate on the table. I appreciate the visit, Beaker. You know us old guys don't get company other than each other. Clyde stated amicably, stretching his long arms and wrinkled hands upwards as his joints creaked softly. I borrowed a human expression, nodding as I choked my reply. Well, uh, there's not many humans in the settlement, and I will admit, I find how varied your cultures are from human to human an interesting prospect. Clyde nodded softly and stroked the floppy green hat on its stand atop his small side table with a soft smile, gazing into nothing. Us military men are like that, uh, proud of where we came from. We take it everywhere with us as a reminder of uh, home. He trailed off and looked down, wiping his eyes before saying, uh, my, my apologies, uh, I, I get reminiscent of home. I nodded softly. I could tell that the human was struggling with some great weight upon his shoulders. I felt an odd thing in my chest and approached the human, placing my hand on his shoulder and patting softly. You do not need to apologize. However, I need to go to the vendors and pick up the things for the day. I felt that twinge again as he nodded, and I left for the market. The street was oddly quiet this morning as I took up my basket and began my walk to the market. I found myself humming the tune Clyde had been as I turned the corner through the main road. I froze. Scalvians, hundreds of them, if not thousands, in their silence. Hovercraft, floating down the main road and breaking off in perfect unison to invade the streets. Ow! Ow! The, the defensive barrier! I mumbled to myself. Then one of the Skevian is in the foremost craft turned, looking straight at me as its ugly diamond-shaped head and four heat-sensing eyes. I stumbled backwards and ran, dropping my basket, my scared mind lamenting its loss as I clumsily ran away from the Scalvian hovercraft. But I could hear it, the whistle of the vehicle picking up speed. They were going to kill me. Scalvians never let potential threats survive. I tried for Clyde's door just as the hovercraft rammed into me. I felt my ribs break as I was slung to the side. The plasticrete pavement, smooth and cold against my face. I coughed and purple leaked from my beak. Blood. I was kicked over on my back and a scalvian pointed its kinetic blaster at my face, my eyes staring down the deadly little hole at the end. The PA system squealed and the scalvians looked up. That melody that Clyde had been humming began an instrumental and soon... A human voice started to sing. Biting soldiers from the sky, fearless men who jump and die, men 
who mean just what they say, the brave men of the Green Beret. A deafening thunderclap echoed down the street, a chunk disappearing from the Scalvian's head in a spray of opaque goop. The Scalvians turned towards the gunshot as another rang out, another Scalvian falling to the ground and revealing my savior. Clyde, armor slung over his bathrobe, floppy green hat perched atop his head, wooden stocked magazine fed rifle tucked right into his shoulder as he swung the barrel onto the third Scalvian, pulling the trigger and removing a chunk from their head, dropping them to the ground. The fourth Scalvian shared his fellow's fate as he hit the plastocrete. Clyde turned as more hovercraft began to come down the street. He raised a hand with all fingers extended above his head and dropped it, pointing at the hovercraft approaching rapidly along the almost deserted street. To say the scream of the rocket launcher was loud would be an injustice as the Hellion anti-convoy missile flew over Clyde's head, impacting the middle of the column and detonating. The wash of heat and pressure overwhelmed me, and I lost consciousness. My hand shook violently for a moment as I set the pen down and reclined in the human hospital bed. I've been writing down the events of the last week as best as I could remember them for a while now. There was something odd that day that it all started. The invasion was not repelled by a formal army. Rather, Clyde and many, many of the human veterans fought tooth and nail for our little colony. While many of us non-humans had been ill-prepared, believing the defensive barrier to be invulnerable. The human veterans stockpiled weapons, ammunition, ordnance, and medical supplies, and all of it was manned by men in their late seventies. I closed my eyes and laughed softly, the feeling relieving some of the weight I didn't know I felt. <laughs> Crazy old humans. I owe them my life. End of story. I just want to thank the T5 patrons and channel members. Bob the Dragon, Cam Maxwell, Casper Arnholtz, Australia the Dreamer, Trigan 95, Fjordic Yol, Meridian 117, Alithia, Jordan Buxbaum, Angry Marine, Albard and Gasta, and Barky. Thank you very much. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed. There are links down below both to support this channel and for the author of this fiction. Anyways, I hope you all have a fantastic one, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.